Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nazanin Alabi. I'm a staff a psychiatrist and assistant professor at Queen's University in uh, Kingston uh, in Ontario, Canada. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, digital health and uh, how uh, using um, online psychotherapy could help uh, mental health uh, during COVID-19. Going to share my screen right now. Use my slides just a second here. Okay, so um, this is as you can see digital mental health at a time of pandemic, uh, pandemic and scaling up service capacity. Uh, in terms of disclosure. I am the co-founder at Opt Inc. Uh, and we have developed an online psychotherapy platform that uh, I'll actually talk a, a little bit uh, more about uh, that uh, during this presentation. I would like to, uh, to talk a little bit about mental health. I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with uh, these numbers more or less, but about one in five adults suffer from a uh, mental health disorder in a given year. And unfortunately, less than half receive the care they need. And uh, this causes the government <laughs> a, a lot of money, which is uh, for uh, United States is uh, 500 billion per year. So depression uh, is a common health condition which affects 350 million people around the world and is one of the common mental health disorders. Uh, talking about uh, psychotherapy and specifically cognitive behavioral therapy, it is one of the most widely investigated uh, forms of psychotherapy and it uh, is affecting and reducing symptoms of anxiety and depression, which are one of the two mostly <clears throat> diagnosed mental health uh, disorders. So uh, before COVID-19, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, how I was uh, looking into developing my uh, online psychotherapy uh, clinic. So many years ago, like uh, more than 12 years ago, actually, uh, I was doing uh, my uh, postdoc fellowship at that time and working in, uh, with mood and anxiety disorder problems. Uh, I realized many people uh, were suffering from depression and anxiety and they wanted to get help and they were looking for psychotherapy uh, but they preferred uh, to see a therapist who would understand their background and culture and they prefer to speak in their native language although for example their English was very good and they had a job like in North America but when it comes to uh, problems like with mental health emotions it's easier to talk with like in your first language. So I was thinking like, what if, if you're in a city that there is no therapist that can speak the same language or like they're not available, you can do like online psychotherapy and see a therapist in another city. That's how I thought about developing an online psychotherapy clinic. And further to that, there are lots of other barriers to receiving psychotherapy, one of them uh, is obviously distance, so like remote areas, like people are not able to come uh, to their sessions because like they can't, the transport is a problem. As I said, the cultural backgrounds for immigrants and refu uh, refugees, the financial uh, limitation, so <clears throat> it is more expensive. <clears throat> and as uh, I can discuss later, uh, it would be uh, the <clears throat> financial cost for patients would be less because the time that the psychotherapist will spend with the patient in online is less because the psychotherapy modules can be pre-designed and the time that the therapist spends with them could be one third or one fourth uh, uh, than uh, in person. So the cost will be less. One of the other things is stigma. People have to take time off from work weekly because psychotherapy is usually every week and then people might ask them, where are you going? And they would know. And unfortunately there's still stigma and the wait time. 
if like the therapist spends one third or one fourth of the time with the patient, the wait, wait time will decrease significantly. So at that time, like it was like, okay, like 2.5 billion people are using internet. So we can look into like developing online psychotherapy uh, clinic. Then COVID-19 happened to just look at that briefly. It was like December 2019 that WHO was notified that there were several cases of pneumonia in China and that the virus was responsible for it. this did not match the other viruses. And then in January 2020, China confirmed that this was coronavirus family and then COVID-19. So this has significantly changed uh, everyone's life because and like then it has caused anxiety and depression some people had anxiety depression and like it made it worse and some people never experienced it before in their life and then they are having some symptoms and why is that is because many countries like most countries they are trying to get people out of streets out of parks right because they want to decrease the spread and this is what we call like self-distancing, but it is becoming more extreme because people have to stay at home and it's kind of like the lockdown and like everything is becoming virtual. So the anxiety first is a normal, normal reaction because what is big in this is like sense of uncertainty. So if people knew that, okay, this is two weeks, it will end. This is one year, it will end. The level of anxiety would be less but is the sense of uncertainty that is causing it, causing even more stress and anxiety. And then this stress that what will happen to me and even to the loved ones, like people have kids, like their parents, people close to them. And uh, this is causing uh, big levels of uh, stress to people. It's causing symptoms of anxiety and depression. And also there is, uh, a lot of concerns around, around school and work and finances because people have lost their jobs and they're worried about like uh, the finances and many other things. Kids are not able to go to school anymore and people have to homeschool. So every like all these symptoms of anxiety and depression is worsening. So uh, I wanted to share some uh, data that uh, has been out. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, Kaiser Foundation has done like a survey and uh, people have said that uh, like 21% uh, have said that uh, the pandemic has caused major neg negative impact on them and 27% said that there has been minor negative impact. Uh, in the recession that happened in 2008, uh, it was shown that 1% uh, percent increase in unemployment increased the suicide by 1.6%, uh, which is very imp important to keep that in mind because it shows us when we calculate that if the unemployment increases by 20%, it can cause about 18,000 suicides and 22,000 overdoses. Uh, if we look at the amount of alcohol that is sold, it has increased by 55% and 75% of that is hard liquor. And this is like the short term effect, but there are actually long term scars. Uh, the hospitalization because of overdose four years after the Katrina was uh, 35%. So just like forgetting about the short-term effect, the long-term effect would be big as well. So how could online psychotherapy help and specifically cognitive behavioral therapy and what it is? The reason that one of the things that I started to do, um, as I mentioned years ago before COVID-19 is Cognitive behavioral therapy is very structured, so it works very well um, in terms of like doing it virtual. 
So it has a part, as you can see, cog cognitive. So it's the cognition, how we think, and the behavioral. So when something stressful happens, like uh, COVID-19, or even like smaller stresses in life, we'll, we will experience lots of thoughts and some of them being negative. That will cause us having uh, different emotions and experiencing different emotions. And we could feel sad, stressed out, anxious, angry. Our body will react, we might, our heart might go fast, we might <clears throat> get short of breath, sweat, shake, and we will have a behavior. And that is like when you don't want to get out of the bed, like you don't want to leave the house, don't want to talk to friends. And these are all related. And if we make a small change to one part, we can make positive changes to the other parts. And this is about learning techniques and strategies to change the way we think. And it's not about being all positive or optimistic. It's about being realistic. So in a negative situation, when we are experiencing depression and anxiety, we see the situation even more negative. So CBT is about changing the way we think and also our behavior. I wanted to uh, talk about some of the uh, studies that uh, uh, has been done. So this study was done in 2011. It was on uh, 77 individuals that have, uh, had the uh, diagnosis of depression, also different kinds of anxiety, such as generalized anxiety, panic disorder, social uh, anxiety disorder. And uh, they, uh, the treatment was online CBT, comparable control group. And the results showed uh, that uh, the online CBT was helpful for treatment of both depression and anxiety. Uh, this one was done in Germany uh, in 2009 uh, in about 400 uh, people and online CBT was used as an adjunct to treatment as usual. And it showed that online CBT was effective in improving symptoms of depression, not only as an adjunct, also when it was used alone by itself. Uh, this one is a, a meta-analysis looking at 14 different studies. What's interesting, it showed that in short term, online CBT had a medium effect uh, in uh, decreasing uh, <laughs> symptoms of uh, depression, but in long term, uh, when they followed up uh, in three to six months, it had a large sustained effect. Uh, what I thought to talk about is the role of clinician support in eCBT. So there are uh, different kinds of uh, clinician support in studies that have been done in online uh, CBT. Uh, if you look here, uh, the first one that it says zero, it, it means that there was no therapist contact. In one, there was contact uh, by a therapist just before the study. And in two, there was contact by a therapist during the study. And in the last one, the contact by, with the therapist was before and during. And as the uh, support by the clinician was more, the efficacy was higher. So if I want to summarize uh, the, this uh, studies, uh, we can say that ECBT, the online uh, CBT, uh, actually can address the barriers to mental health access that we discussed, the barriers. And compared to the traditional psychotherapy, which is in person, face to face, it seems that ECBT is shorter. So it is more time and cost effective because what the therapist can offer to one person, uh, if it's face to face, they can offer that to three to four people in the same amount of time. And the meta-analysis didn't show that uh, eCBT was inferior to face-to-face -face CBT. And uh, while all studies show that online CBT was helpful, adding some guided uh, uh, support increased efficacy. So if like they were writing the patient's feedback, uh, if uh, they checked with them every week, the efficacy was higher. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I started this uh, developing modules and uh, uh, for uh, CBT for depression and anxiety 12 years ago. First, we started sending the modules to the patients by email and uh, sending them feedback by email. But then a couple of years ago, we realized it's not as secure <laughs> as we wanted it to be. 
Uh, so we developed an online platform, which is called OPT, Online Psychotherapy Tool. This is the website to the platform. And all the patients and the therapists have access to that. They have their username, password, so they have to log in. And um, if I, I want to give you an overview, so each module based on what it is, it has specific number of sessions, for example, for CBT, for depression or generalized anxiety disorders, 12 sessions is about like 30 slides kind of thing. Uh, the patient should go through them themselves uh, and each week they will receive a session and uh, it is the material is similar more or less to uh, in-person sessions. As you know, each therapist do it differently, but this is pre-designed based on evidence and it highlights a different topic each week and it has general information in overview of skills and similar to uh, all other CBT uh, that programs, uh, it is homework based, the person does the homework and submits uh, to the therapist and the week after they will get personalized feedback and the next session one of the questions that many people ask is that what do you do with like, you know, safety concern? So um, similar to many other things, we'll in the beginning say this is just for you to learn skills, is a program for you to learn strategies, is not for crisis. I always explain to people that if like after hours, uh, you know, you have GI bleeding, you can't just call your family doctor and leave a message you have to go to the emergency department, get the help you need. So we don't check this uh, during the week. And uh, it's, not for, it's not designed for crisis. We have never had a problem with that. Just a, an overview of sessions, for example, for depression, we start with a first session with depression and share your story and they tell us what they're hoping for, then five part model as we go talk record, action plan, the last session is review. And uh, uh, this is, I uh, just wanted to you to see how a session looks like. It just goes very fast, but uh, the patients, uh, like it takes them like about 40, 50 uh, minutes uh, to go through this session. So basically they will see the material at the end is their homework and they will submit that and it will go to the therapist. And so uh, this is the session they will uh, receive and then they will submit their homework and then they will receive the uh, feedback. And I put a sample like for all feedbacks that we write, we have a template and based off the patient's uh, homework, we will change it. So we start with, okay, thank you for sharing uh, this. We summarize the previous session and then we say like what they did right or wrong and we will give them a feedback. In terms of uh, my research, I have done different studies. The first one was on depression. We had the inclusion criteria of people 20 to 40 and uh, uh, if they had suicide, active suicidal ideation or they were receiving other medication or psychotherapy, they were excluded. And uh, 144 people showed interest. We did the <clears throat> BEC uh, questionnaire and we had 93 that uh, did the study and 47 received CBT and 46 were in control group. At the end of uh, uh, like the study, uh, we also, like they did uh, 10 weeks and also six months follow-up. And uh, if you look at the result, uh, people who received the online CBT, their score significantly improved after six months. Uh, the result was uh, still uh, good. And in the other, the control group, there was no improvement. We did the similar study for generalized anxiety disorder and we had 62 total patients and there was a, 
uh, 31 in each group. And again, there was improvement in online CBT group and but not in the control group. We did a study for adolescent and the result was very interesting uh, because uh, in this group, we had, uh, we compared the online group with in-person and there was significant improvement in the online group, as you can see here, but, uh, and the online group showed decrease in anger, anxiety, depression, and behavioral uh, <coughs> disturbances, but uh, the results were significantly stronger than the live group, and we think the reason is that the adolescents were uh, interested more in um, online CBT. They didn't want to take part in in-person groups. So the current research that we are doing at Queen's University, one is on anxiety, uh, offering online CBT for anxiety. We have three groups, uh, three arms, one online CBT, then medication, then online CBT plus medication. I have just put the chart for medication because there is a specific algorithm for that. And uh, we haven't completed uh, yet, but one thing that is interesting in our online group, uh, the, the total number of sessions is 12, but uh, the average of sessions that people who don't, who quit in the middle is uh, like during the therapy, the average sessions that they complete is 10. But in in-person, when they quit, the average sessions that they complete is about three sessions. So if they do online, they usually complete more sessions. And, and the ones that so far have uh, completed the therapy, the quality of life has significantly improved. And their question of GAD7 and DAS has significantly, the scores have decreased. Then we have a study on uh, online CBT for depression. We are comparing online CBT with treatment plus their treatment as usual and group CBT with treatment as usual. Again, in our online CBT group, the number of sessions that they completed if they quit was nine. Quality of life has significantly improved and uh, PHQ9 and quits has significantly decreased. Uh, during COVID, the study that we, are, uh, we have just started is online delivery of psychotherapy tailored to patients suffering from mental health problems, specifically depression and anxiety due to COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, I just wanted uh, to show you uh, two sessions of the modules for that. We have developed nine sessions uh, with uh, focusing uh, some, uh, <laughs> it's uh, online CBT and focusing sessions on like problem solving and also resilience. So uh, this is our uh, session one. So uh, we have a focus on COVID-19 and like the examples are specifically for that. As you can see, that's like we're saying how it is related. Uh, for example, the, exa uh, the example is the, how like people think, if like they were coughing before, they were thinking more, it, it is uh, because of uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, an allergy, but now it could be through COVID-19, uh, we're asking them to set their goals and uh, what they are hoping for. And is what I was explaining. This is session two. We are in the beginning is always checking how they are feeling, if they are working towards their goal. We explain the CBT, the cognitive part, and also we go towards the behavioral part as well, teaching the breathing techniques and uh, encouraging them to uh, <clears throat> practice that and which one is working better for them. Uh, so the future research that uh, we're hoping to do is to develop an online clinic for patients suffering with different mental health problems, not only with mood and disorder, uh, like for depression and generalized anxiety. So what the modules that are almost done we, uh, is for OCD and then pain disorder, CBTI for insomnia, for social anxiety, PTSD addiction. We have seeking safety and also relapse prevention. And uh, also we have DBT. 
And also this is a book that we have written. It's the first handbook for online cognitive behavioral therapy. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email us. Thank you.